the hacks themselves are not easy to do. You've got to circumvent three different systems and there's a lot of technology involved and you've got to do a lot of work and a lot of understanding. It took us a long time to do the research. Is it possible? Yes. Cybersecurity consultant Chris Roberts discussing computer vulnerabilities on board airliners as the FBI investigates him for hacking into one airliner system. Let's continue now on Newsmax Prime. According to court documents, Roberts told the FBI he accessed controls through the in-flight entertainment system, which he claims he's done as many as 20 times since the year 2011. Joining us now, Todd Curtis, aviation safety expert and the president of airsafe.com, Skyping in from Brookline, Massachusetts, and not too far away, up in Amherst, Massachusetts, our good friend Stephen J.J. Weissman, professor at Bentley University. Todd, let's start with you. We heard about the United Jetliner over the weekend. I think everybody had a collective shudder. Do you believe what this so-called computer security expert is saying to the FBI? Uh, frankly, I don't because I don't see any objective evidence from a third party, in this case very likely the FBI, to show that that definitively took place. It's quite likely that while he was attempting to affect the aircraft, the aircraft did have a change in flight path. Whether it was due to his actions directly or indirectly remains to be seen. Uh, Stephen, you and I have talked about this subject before, but now to get this report of the United Jetliner moving sideways, uh, your take on all of this. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I am very much concerned about the security of airliners, particularly now that uh, aircraft are so connected to the Internet. That being said, and despite the fact that Chris Roberts has given speeches about this for the last five years, I'm not convinced that he actually did this. So I, I think it's of great concern. The General Accountability Office is of great con uh, concern by it. The FAA is it is a potential problem, but I'm not sure that he cracked it. So this Chris Roberts guy, is he getting his Andy Warhol-like 15 minutes of fame? Should the FBI lock him up, Todd? Well, he's going to be, uh, he, ha he has already been investigated and interrogated quite a bit by the FBI and other law enforcement authorities. And he will have more than a fair amount of attention uh, online and elsewhere because he is a longtime computer security expert, so he already has a bit of an audience already. Uh, that said... Whether or not this is actually true, whether or not he did hack into the aircraft, this does feed into the public's legitimate concern that somehow or another, in spite of the fact of all the regulatory controls and all the technological controls to keep this from happening, that it may be possible to somehow or another reach out and touch the flight management system of a modern airliner via the in-flight entertainment system. Uh, Stephen, I've got to tell you, this whole thing with this Roberts guy seems to me to be warped because it's like uh, an arsonist setting a fire saying, see, I did that so you'd come put the fire out or you'd see the weakness in your fire protection plans. Uh, do you share that assessment? Well, you, there is certainly an element of that, but he is someone who has gone to the airlines in the past and wasn't taken seriously. So perhaps he may have done this as his warning. I'll tell you the two things that uh, concern me the most. Uh, one is the fact that although the airlines are telling us that the two systems, the airline control systems and the online entertainment systems are separated, I've also seen that the separation, the firewalls between them may not be as secure as it may be. And the thing that bothers me the most and which unfortunately is quite plausible is that one of the things that Robert said was when he breached these networks, he did it by using default IDs and default passwords, which we have found all too often in security systems, companies do not change the default, the default IDs or passwords, making them susceptible. So I think this is a wake up call and uh, I hope the FAA, I hope the aviation industry, I hope the GAO are all on this. Uh, about a minute remains. Todd Curtis, since you're there at airsafe.com, what needs to be done to protect planes and passengers from hackers? Well, frankly, I think that the, uh, the hacking community, or at least those who uh, have the same skills as the, uh, uh, the hacking community, get together and figure out if indeed this is possible. Or if it's not possible, what other aspects of the in-flight entertainment system or the other electronic systems on the aircraft, for example, the iPads the pilots sometimes carry with flight information on it. 
whether or not there are other systems on the aircraft that could be vulnerable, and whether they should be protected in ways or not being protected right now. 30 seconds, Stephen Weissman. Is, is there a danger with all this discussion of how he did it that we're tipping off other diabolical folks to, to pick up on the, quote, research done thus far? You know, I don't think so in the sense that I think they've already been looking for this. We are part of this Internet of Things where everything is connected through the Internet. And that brings us uh, great opportunities, but it also brings great dangers. And uh, this is something that really is a very real risk and one we need to be wary of. Todd Curtis, Stephen J.J. Weissman, gentlemen, we thank you both for your insights and your analysis. What do you think of the story and what might be afoot? Why don't you send me your comments via email? There's also Facebook and Twitter. And we're coming back.